livery is, you know, she's yellow. Um, but she looked beautiful. She, she did. She, she looked just beautiful. On ice water, we see the cold differential still produces work in the Stirling engine. No tomfoolery here, just an analog glass Stirling engine. Running on a cup of ice water. Previously on hot tea. Something about... I don't remember now how... I can't remember how it was I got it today. My grandpa was like something like... I don't actually know how old he was now. He's young. My, my dad has outlived him already. Was your dad young when he, his dad died? Um, like 20 or 21 or something like that. Pretty young. I was 12, I was 17. Chris, five years older? I didn't realize he was that much older than you. Five years and five days. Five, five years and five days. I didn't care. Remember that? Yeah. In this example, I have a tea bag of chai and the heat pump here, a Stirling engine, acts in the most unusual way as a reflux condenser. So, some of the hot volatile components that would have easily evaporated off hit the hot plate and then recondense back into the tea. So they go up, strike the plate, transfer the heat, and then drop back down. This is known as a reflux. Now, it's not a proper one because the heat energy is being stolen here and we're not doing a soul hex extraction or anything. It's just a way to um, make an entertaining uh, infusion enhancement. So you get the joy of letting your tea cool off in the morning and watch the little engine go while also capturing some of the more volatile, flavorful components that would have easily volatilized off the surface of the hot water during the brewing or infusion process. Oh, there's a novel application for one of these little air source heat pumps, also known as a Stirling engine after the inventor, Robert Stirling, from the 1800s. Made using today's manufacturing technology. Thanks for watching.